So I'm finally getting the chance to participate in Inktober this year. My understanding of Inktober is where artists for every day of October produce a different artwork using predominantly ink. What I'm going to do with this video is to give us a brief walkthrough of my day three project. It's sort of a dystopian landscape, but you'll see. Let's get into it. First off are the tools that I'll be using. This is my Sumie brush and ink set. I'll be using a combination of natural bristles, I believe this one is wolf hair, and also a synthetic brush. Now, a natural brush or the natural fibers give a rougher texture and the synthetic fibers give a softer texture. The medium of choice will be of course ink. This is my ink pad. I use the ink pad along with water to break down the ink. And this is the ink fighting me to get out of the box. <laughs> this is a Chinese ink stick. You apply water and water dissolves the ink, the solid ink into liquid. A small container to the right hand corner is where I will hold the water. And then the other device at the top of the screen is where we are going to keep our brushes so that they don't make a mess everywhere. Now these four materials together, the ink pad, the ink stick, the paper and the brushes are what we call the four treasures of the study in Chinese culture. The first step when we're preparing our paper to be painted is to create a border. For these kind of illustrations, I tend to use a half inch border right around the page. The page itself is about 8 by 10. Apply tape onto the borders that was previously marked so that the ink doesn't seep or doesn't splash over onto that half inch border. With the page finally applied firmly to your baseboard using tape, it's time to start drawing. I normally begin drawing by marking where my light source is or my focal point is or the subject in my pieces. Right here you see me doing a roughly rough sketch of the landscape. As I mentioned, this would be a dystopian illustration, a dystopian landscape, because my first two images was, my first two Inktober pieces was first a sapling tree, a sapling blue maho, and then second it was an ash tree, and now I feel like it's time to paint the or illustrate that third stage in life, which is death. So the sapling blue maho is for birth, ash tree is for adulthood, and this one with its dead trees represent death or old age. A very small amount of water is applied into the, the ink pad and then as I mentioned the ink stick is rubbed into that water in order to dissolve and break down that solid or that calcified ink so that it can be applied to the surface. 
I'm using a splash pad here to make sure that the opacity of the ink is right because it's black I'm unable to see for certain how gray or how black that ink is right now I'm just applying ink liberally onto the surface just to get stuff rolling Just applying just a very small amount of water onto that already painted surface so that I can spread that ink even further down the page and have it fade from the darkest color at the top the darkest gray or black if you may and as it approaches the horizon it will get slowly lighter and lighter and fade into white next up i'll be using a more concentrated opacity of ink start to apply some very soft details once again brush strokes are extremely light extremely loose just based on not only the tools but the, and the media used, but also the Sumier style of East Asian painting, which is really just focused on emotion and feeling rather than realistic representation. One could say that this style of Asian painting is can be likened to European romanticism in some respects but not quite it has a sort of abstract like a sort of softness to it that I really appreciate but I I appreciate I really love all aspects of are all styles are types of romanticized art because I feel like art stands for something greater than just realistic representation it has to have some sort of emotional impact on the viewer or audience no I'm trying to establish mid-ground in the illustration the first layer up top we can consider that as a background what I'm working on right now we call that the mid-ground and the rocks at the very front at the very bottom of the illustration we can refer to that as a foreground image or the foreground elements just getting in some more darks so that the light areas are better emphasized. Sumie is really just a gradual build up of staining the paper from a very light gray to jet black or as close to black as possible. Here I'm using a very small brush to kind of start picking out the elements that require more detail like the trees and the rocks the underside of the rocks where the shadows fall and some other interesting elements in the illustration. Here yeah, we have some black stars. I feel like white stars wouldn't have done this illustration much justice. So I went with black stars instead. I mean, and eclipses, physically, the blocking of the sun by the moon 
from our perspective on earth so from a metaphysical standpoint or from an illustration standpoint i i felt it was it would be interesting to kind of flip everything else upside down as well including the stars that maybe during an eclipse rather than at night stars become black instead of white you have two dogs at the bottom right there I was initially going to put in one dog but I feel like that would make the illustration a bit too lonely and dogs dogs walk in packs so you're not going to see one dog without another and just some final addition of dark elements underneath the clouds to bring those up a little bit more and then we're done it's time to apply my seal circumpunct just have to clean up the canal in it before applying that seal so that it doesn't apply as this square of red on the page and that's about it guys thanks for watching and stay tuned for more leave a like and subscribe